This video is for DeFi developers who want to run Uniswap v3 on their local machine. This is my updated code circa May 2023 for deploying Uniswap v3 contracts, tokens, and pools on your local hard hat environment. This saves you major time and money when testing Uniswap integrations or just playing with the Uniswap contracts. I'm Blockman and I teach developers how to use Uniswap. If you want to learn Uniswap v3 fast without spending weeks struggling with the documentation and reading contract code line by line in GitHub, sign up for my Uniswap v3 masterclass where we build a functional Uniswap interface from scratch. Link in the description. Now let's write some code. I have five different scripts here that we're going to walk through one by one. First, we deploy the Uniswap v3 contracts, deploy tokens, deploy pools, add liquidity to those pools, and then check the liquidity. From here, you can pretty much do anything that you could do on a testnet or mainnet. I'll explain important caveats for getting this to work and what's changed since my last video on this topic. I'll be giving a lot of tips, so please watch the video before asking me why something is not working for you. Let's go. I have a number of packages installed. Copy this package.json into your project and install these libraries. I have my hardhack config.js file here. And I have some vanilla ERC20 tokens here. But let's get into the meat and potatoes, actually deploying these Uniswap v3 contracts. Our first script here deploys all the main Uniswap contracts. So we get the contract factory and utils from Ethers.js, as well as the wrapped Ether artifact, which we'll need to get the wrapped Ether ABI a required step in setting up Uniswap v3. Then we'll import a node module fs that we'll use to automatically write deployment addresses to our .emv file, which will then be accessed by the other scripts. This is an improvement I made over prior versions where you had to manually copy paste deployment addresses. And fs won't work out of the box in promises, so you'll need to get promiseify as well. Now create an object which contains all the artifacts, which include the ABIs, for all the contracts we'll deploy in this script. Define a function that I found in Uniswap's GitHub and converted from TypeScript to JavaScript. I could clean this up a bit more, but it works, and we'll be calling this shortly. We begin our main function and we get the owner, which is really just signer1 from Hardhat's generated signers. Then we deploy wrapped ether and we do this with contract factory and pass it its ABI bytecode and an owner, which we get from our artifacts object constructed above. Then we deploy the Uniswap v3 factory, basically the same structure as deploying wrapped ether with the ABI, the bytecode, and the owner. Then we deploy Uniswap's swap router. And when calling dot deploy, this takes the factory address and the wrapped ether addresses arguments. That's why we need to deploy those two first. You'll notice a lot of contracts here rely on previously deployed contracts, so order is very important. We deployed the NFT descriptor. Again, this is just like how we deployed wrapped ether above with the ABI and bytecode, but with obviously its own ABI and bytecode. Now, deploying the non-fungible token position descriptor is a little more complicated. Here we use link libraries function above, and we'll pass the results of this as the ABI when deploying the position descriptor next. This also changed slightly since my last version of this deployment code. And then here we deploy the non-fungible token position descriptor. And this is a change since my last video because of changes to the original contract code. We need to pass native currency label bytes when deploying the non-fungible token position descriptor. Um, I'm using utils format bytes 32 string to convert the string uh, weth into a bytes 32 string. And then we pass that when we uh, deploy the non-fungible token position descriptor. Deploy the position manager, and this takes the factory wrapped ether and the non-fungible token position descriptor address as arguments when deploying. So here I'm creating an array of the addresses for all the contracts that we just deployed, and I'm joining them together into a string delineated by line breaks. 
and then I'm converting fs.write file into a promise based function, specifying the path of the file we're writing to, and I'm using .emv just because it's very easy to read from with the .env package, and then we'll write to this file and log if it succeeds or fails. Let's run this script. Actually, before we do that, we should start the local hardhat node with npx hardhat node. And then in another window, we'll run this script. Now, if we look in .emv, we will see the addresses of all those contracts we just deployed. And here's an important point. This first script will wipe out the .emv file and recreate it. But all the other scripts will just append to it. So only run each script once, or you'll get duplicate addresses in the .emv file that can cause you some bugs. Also, the addresses can change. So redeploy these all every time you start your local hardhat node. Now onto the second script, this deploys contract tokens, and I'll be deploying three tokens here, though we'll only use two in the remaining part of this tutorial. Uh, import SF and Promisify as usual. Start the main function, get two signers from ethers.getSigners. Then we'll deploy the three tokens that I have in the contracts directory. These are basic, these are basic ERC20 tokens that I've called Tether, USD coin, and wrap Bitcoin. So deploy Tether, deploy USDC. Deploy wrap Bitcoin. And keep in mind that we've also already deployed wrapped Ether in the first contract. So we have four different tokens to play with. Then using the owner, we mint 100,000 of each coin to Signer2 so that Signer2 can add liquidity to the pool in a later script. And we do that for Tether, we do that for USDC, and we do that for wrapped BTC. Then we're going to, like before, write the addresses to .env. Except now, instead of write file, we're using a pen file. So this doesn't uh, overwrite the file completely. It just adds this to the end of it. So if you ran this multiple times, it would add these addresses multiple times to the .emv file. Let's give this a run. And you can see that these have now been added to .emv. Script number three, we deploy a liquidity pool. First we import .env and then we use it to import all these addresses from the .env file. We create an artifact object like we did in the first script, but there are only two artifacts that we need here. We get contract and big number from ethers. We import big numbers.js, not to be confused with the 10 other big number packages in JavaScript. We do some configuration on that. And after Ether 6 is incorporated into Hard Hat, we won't need to do this anymore, but as of now, it's not. We get um, Promisify and FS again. We get our provider from Ethers, and this is a change because we used to get it from Waffle in my old code that did this. And I found this function in Uniswap's GitHub and converted it from TypeScript to JavaScript. It takes a given price ratio between tokens and converts that into a square root price that we need to initialize the pool. So this is very handy. We initialize the non-fungible position manager and this is the contract we use to create and initialize pools. And the factory which lets us get the addresses of deployed pools. Uh, this function contains the code to deploy a pool and get its deployed address. So here we get the owner, and then we call create and initialize pool if necessary to deploy the pool. And then we use the factory to get the pool address, and we'll call this function in a minute. In our main function, we call deploy pool that we defined above. But here's an important point. Depending on the addresses that tokens were deployed to, you may need to switch the order of the addresses here. So sometimes you'd want the Tether address first, and other times you'd want USDC first. Um, otherwise, this deploy will mysteriously fail with a transaction reverted without a reason string. And then we write this uh, deployed pool address to .emv. Let's run this. Script number four, this script adds liquidity to the pool we deployed last time. So we import .env and our deployment addresses, set up our artifacts object, do some imports. So we're gonna get contract from ethers, we'll get token from SDK core, 
and we'll get pool position and nearest usable tick from V3 SDK. This is a little helper function which pulls pool data from our deployed pool, information like tick space and the fee that we'll need. In our main function, we get signer2, and we get our provider. We initialize the two contracts in the pool. We approve Uniswap to access 1,000 of these two tokens in signer2's wallet. We grab the pool data from our get pool data function above. Now, rather than the normal ethers pool, we need to initialize a pool using the v3 SDK pool class, right? So this is maybe a little confusing because we'll initialize two different types of pool objects that we'll be using for two different things. This first one is a connection to the actual pool, and we'll get to the second in a minute. First, create two instances, one of each token, and the arguments are chain ID, token address, decimal, symbol, and name. The chain ID for a local hard hat is 31337. We create the second pool object, which is merely an instantialized V3 SDK object. Then we create a position object to describe the liquidity position we want to mint. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into this here. Then using the position we call mint amounts to output the amount of each token that we'll need to send in our transaction to create the position. We create our params that we'll send to the transaction. We initialize the position manager contract, the contract that creates liquidity positions, call mint on it to create the transaction, and wait for it to complete. Let's run this. Now we should have a pool with liquidity. Let's check that. Import.env and the address of the pool, import the contract from ethers, get the Uniswap v3 pool artifact. Uh, we have the same get pool data function here, but I'm adding two string onto liquidity so we can read the output. In our main function, we get the provider, we initialize the pool, and we use it to get current information about the pool. And we can see when we run this, liquidity was added to the pool. Tell me your questions and future tutorial requests in the comments, and like and subscribe if you're still watching. I'll see you next time.